falls in the air. I'm Mark Ballard. I'm going to show you how you can take wooden letters, some paint, some ribbon, a hot glue gun, and even some little stamps and create this beautiful fall wall hanging. You don't want to miss this. The calendar says the 1st of September. That means we're definitely getting into fall. The weather outside says the middle of summer. I don't know what it is, but we have to go by the calendar. and We've got to get ready for fall. I'm Mark Ballard, and today I'm going to show you how you can make something different than just your ordinary wreath for a door or a wall hanging somewhere in your house. It's really kind of fun. As most of y'all know, this spells fall. I'm sure if you don't, we can go through that. F-A-L-L. <laughs> but, um... Everywhere you go, every magazine you see, big letters, you know, monograms are the things that, that are really in. People are putting them on wreaths, they're putting them on doors, they're putting them on, you know, just hanging letters above their, you know, um, sofas in a collection, working them in with pictures, other things, plates. So what we're going to do today is spell out the word fall. We don't want anybody to make any mistakes about what time of year this is. So we're going to go F-A-L-L -L, so they know. And I'm going to show you how I stamped each one of these letters with a different stamp to indicate sort of fabric. I wanted it to feel like fabric. I wore this shirt, as I told you earlier, because it kind of reminded me of this look. See, it's a color in the background, and it appears that this has been stamped on. So what we're going to do is stamp on a design onto the letters. But what you need to do before you get to your letters, and you can get these anywhere at like um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any place like that, and they're white or unfinished, and you have to paint, you know, don't you just hate painting both sides of the letter? I just wanted to leave that white, but I thought y'all would think it was horrible. So <laughs> I painted it, but you had to wait for this to dry, you had to go around all those crooks and crannies. And one thing I do want to tell you, and I'm sure y'all found this yourself, is when you're painting like that and you, you get the front already painted, you go ahead and try to do these little tiny edges, Sometimes you forget it'll gang up like thick paint around the edge, and I do not like that. So once you finish doing those sides, make sure you take your brush and go back and smooth out. That's just a little painter's tip, Liz. Smooth it out flat, and then you have to remember that when you're doing it on the back, too, because it might push some of that to the front. But once I did that, and I got, I, these are the, this is my palette of colors for fall. I got um, orange, lime green, yellow, a pretty red, and a brown. And as you can tell, none of my colors are the exact color. Like that and this and some brown made that. So you might want to mix colors around. I didn't, I didn't use this. Or, I did use that orange, but I used that orange plain. But you might, they have so many different colors. I just used some I had. You may want to just pick the four colors you want to begin with and you want to worry about mixing. But it's fun to mix paint. Just get you one of these little plates. I just love these little plastic plates and you can just... I'm going to add a little bit of brown, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. Okay, they, they make all kinds of little stamp pads. There's an acre and a pumpkin, a leaf. And so these are like a dollar up at the line toward the front of the thing. And I thought, well, that, you know, I was thinking about this pattern, and I thought, why don't we try one of these? So I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, some people don't like to do it this way, but I think this works better. I put the paint... Until, like I said, you know, I can't live without these and my glue gun. That's two things I have to have. We're going to practice on this piece of paper. Just use a soft brush and just pull very little paint. It can't be really thick paint. See how that's the perfect consistency. And then just lightly go over the back side of your stamp. The reason I'm saying this versus blobbing it down in there is, you, I mean, it's going to make it look like it's too thick in some places and not thick in other. That way you can control how that's doing to begin with. Then we're going to press down. And then we have a perfect acorn. Isn't that cool? Plus it's got the shadowing. That's what's so cool. Like the shirt is, makes it look like it's 3D. We're not just doing just a straight design. So you can do that with the pumpkins, leaves. You know, there's a variety of these around, so whatever, you know, look you want to. Right now we're wanting fall, so that's what we're doing. Now once we finished that, and well, I had painted these, waited for them to dry, I went back with the orange pumpkin, green leaves, I did yellow leaves there, it almost looks like green too, but it's yellow, and then I love this kind of vicey green color with that brown acorn. And keep in mind, I wanted it to blend like it's fabric, so I didn't want to just do them straight up. 
You see how I've randomly put it place in places, parts of it only has part of the leaf showing. And like if this was a whole piece of fabric, you would have cut that out. So make sure you'd like right here or there. Just make sure you do stuff like that to keep it random. You don't want it to look like it's totally planned out. We like to be random, right, Liz? That's right, Mark. Okay, that's right, Mark. It sounded like Mary, didn't it? Okay. Once you have your painting done, I spray these with an ultraviolet, like a um, just a regular outdoor glaze, clear glaze. The one I used was ultraviolet protectant so that, you know, if you do decide to use this outdoors, it's not going to just bleach right out. But I do think it needs some kind of finish. And as you can tell, it gives a beautiful, you know, kind of matte, semi-gloss finish. I love that look. Okay, so let's move our letters. And here's what we're going to do to start our wall hanging. Burlap is the other knee rage. Everywhere you go, you're seeing burlap. There's a smell about burlap that you certainly cannot deny. Even if somebody blindfolded you, <laughs> put you in a room and then put a thing of burlap, you would know it. And you would definitely know it, if not by the smell, by your clothes when you got home. It's kind of like my chihuahua. Once I pick them up, whites everywhere. Liz knows that every time she leaves there, she's covered in white hair. You're covered in burlap. But it's really, really popular now because it's really in for this time of year with it being fall. You kind of think of earthy burlaps and stuff like that. This was just a regular ribbon. Ooh, struck my ribbon like this and I measured out the length I wanted it to be but I didn't feel like that was thick enough to support our letters so I ran me a thin thing of glue and glued these two together ending with the same thing and straightening that end off I did not glue this top area <laughs> because I wanted to have a little loop and I'll explain why right now we have to have some way to hang it so I'm going to use one of these green pipe cleaners and go to the very top of this and just basically make me a loop. Because if we turned it that way and tried, we got to have this hanging flat. If we turned it the other way, it would definitely hang wrong. So we're going to just make a little hanger, much the same as you would do on the back of a painting or back of a regular wreath. Just curl this extra around. So basically, we've got that situation. I guess you, so I suppose if you did it before you did, I waited to match my green of my burlap, but if you did it before you actually glue the other, you could use an actual, you know, metal ring or something like that would do the same thing. Once we get that together, we're going to begin to glue our letter forms onto our fan. So take a minute to kind of position them That where, where you want them to go. And you see I left a couple of inches there. We can decide at the end if we want to cut that off or leave it or whatever. I am leaving more space up here because I'm coming back up here to do a bow situation. So we definitely want more space at the top. So once we decide that, all we're going to do is attach these to, with some hot glue to our ribbon which is double, so it should be fine stamina-wise. Now, you don't want to put any glue on any place that's not going to touch the, the ribbon, so let's just put that right here. Otherwise, we would have that glued to our, <laughs> our marble table, and it would be fall for more than one season. <laughs> you do that. So see, that stuck really good because burlap is very porous. So what I'm trying to do is like, I want to leave a little bit of space, maybe a finger length of space. And I try to get that in, to feel, because you don't want it like some of them over here. So I'm trying to get it where it looks like it's going down. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to judge my space. So basically, that indicates that we would put the glue in this area of the A. A little bit, hopefully I judged correctly, Liz. But I also love the fact that you can see that little touch of green back there because it kind of carries the whole theme. Look at that, I did. Moving down. Now, see the L, we can't just do straight on like that because it's going to look funny. It's going to make our green leave, right, Liz? And we want to show that. So we're going to come really basically down the center point of this. I'm using more glue than it can heat fast enough. <laughs> so I'm having to shove it through there. Don't you love that? Mark is always in some sort of hurry, so. so that way we've got that real pretty edge of the green. And 
then we will do the same thing. Let me make sure. Yes. With our acorn L. Love this color combination. Oh, here's another thing I was going to tell you that might, may or may not be interesting to you. Because you could do it as random as you wanted to color-wise. But since I'm using some brighter fall colors up here for my bow, I decided to use my brighter colors at the top. I know you noticed this, Liv. And to work my way down to the duller colors so that we'll have like a bright situation and then kind of graduate down. Now while these are drying, let me get my stuff together and we'll show you how to make a quick bow for the top of this. They've got some beautiful fall ribbons that are out. And you see how this takes on all the colors that we've used in our letters and patterns. And it, I was wondering, I, didn't want, I don't want you to be scared of the stamping process because that really does give it another dimension, doesn't it, Liz? It I mean, does. this would be pretty if it were just the colors. And if you want to do yours with just the colors, you could do that. Or if you want to do your all the same colors, that's where I want you to be inspired. But then do it how you want to do it because there's a as many different ways as you possibly can imagine can be done. So, I wanted to choose, as y'all know, I'm going to choose more than one ribbon. You knew that. I, know what you're saying. I picked a little variety of ribbon. Again, this is like an open weave raffia ribbon. It sort of has that burlapy feel, which I told you I was really in. So, I'm going to start. We're just going to make a real simple bow. It's not going to be a big flouncy bow because we don't want to take away from our letters. I'm going to start by just cutting. Well, I'll tell you what let's do first. We've got to get a way to tie our bow onto the top of this. Remember, we left that loop to get our, um, you know, way to hang it. So we're going to come up here. With, and I thought it would be good to use the same ribbon we did the main part of this out of. And loop this around. And keep that flat. The only thing about burlap is it's hard to it's stiff. So you have to really pull like that that and that's going to give us a way to attach our bow at the very end so then we're going to take approximately maybe 14 15 inches of ribbon and i'm going to maybe a little bit more of this let's just go ahead and get our ribbon together it's always good to get all your stuff together that you're going to use on any project like this before you go to get started because that way you have everything lined up. We may put a little touch of this in there at the very end. Now we can clear these away. I'm going to get a couple pieces of raffia because I thought that would be kind of cool, especially for the fall time. Okay, so I want this plaid to really show, so I'm going to start my background part of the bow out of this real rich reddish rust color. This does have wire in it, which will be good for you to use because you know, it, it will have some stamina should you put it outside. And then we're going to use the plaid next. And what I'm basically, let me start over. What I'm basically doing is lining this up where it's catching some of the other behind there and doing it layer on top of layer. Just like this. Make sure you got all your extra pieces in there because we're ultimately going to be cinching this together like that. Then I think y'all thought it'd be fun to put some of this in because you can kind of see through it, yet it gives you some definite texture. Then, since we've got the green going, and it's also going to be our streamers, we'll put a little piece of it next. And I'm getting a little bit smaller, as you can see, the more we go, and I'm going to let that be part of a streamer. And then I'm just going to catch these into that like that, just for fun. So we're going to have all this squinched up, and we're going to come up here, making sure every bit of it stays in place, and we don't have any of our raw edges hanging out, and tie a knot very tightly around that. And see this raffia just gives you a little fun wild kind of touch. We're going to take a minute to fluff out so we can see all our different pretty colors. We'll probably do a little bit of a haircut on this raffia. We want to do this in <laughs> We don't, however, we don't want it to take over. 
And then we will always, as I told you, to cut these at an angle, the ones that show our streamers. So we'll cut those at a nice angle so that it keeps them from unraveling so badly. And thanks for a neater project. And so one, to take it one step further, which I know I love to do that, I'm going to perhaps put a few leaves, fall leaf, look how pretty that one is, just with a little dab of hot glue. And we could just go in here and insert them in a couple of places. I don't think we should do a lot of it. But that will give us that festive look of fall. Here's another stream where I did not cut an angle with. You have to watch me. I'll tell them to do something. And they'll call me and tell me I didn't. But y'all love doing that. <laughs> Everything I give is just a suggestion. There's, as my daddy always said, there's more than one way to hem up a cat. <laughs> so everything I have, this is just one way to do it, but you could do whatever you wanted to. Liz and I were looking at a project when she got here, something I had saved and something she had saved, and we both agreed that it was a cool idea. It just needed one other thing, didn't it, Liz? It needed to go a step further. And that's what I think is so great about creating these projects, is I want to inspire you to do it. Now, when you've seen the way I chose to do it, you can go out and make yours any way you want to. And it'll be fine. There's no right or wrong way about the whole thing. It's just your expression of your creativity. And that's the most important thing. Now, let's clear up our workspace before I glue something else in here. I might have me glued here in a moment. <laughs> it's fine to glue part of yourself to the thing sometimes. It's, the hot glue is an issue. Especially if you fry your hand to it. Okay, so let's unveil our fall. Is that not wonderful? And so you could hang that in a place like this, on the back of a door, coming into your house on a door, anywhere that's going to make you smile and think about the fall season that's upon us. We need to shift our way of thinking. I think the leaves are starting to change. Hopefully it's going to get a little bit cooler. And fall is here. So we need to make those adjustments with our decor. Go out and create something beautiful, and I can't wait to see you next time.